Hello and good afternoon, good morning everyone, Nicola Rosano here and uh, in this short video I'll show you how to properly design the DAV uh, fast routine that is based on uh, Manic Tala scaling loose plus uh, the graphical approach. Actually at the end I decided to do the code modification and the rectifications by my own because I realized that was much harder to explain someone else what was my intention and uh, how to properly set up the code so i decided to do that by my own uh, at the same time i decided to do that uh, quickly because uh, my life in general is starting to become very busy for personal reasons and for job activities reasons so i uh, hope you will appreciate it but i mean I realized that I do not have in the future so much time to spend on that. So hope you will like it. Um, first thing to do, uh, first thing we need to do is to go on the MATLAB. Actually, I am on my personal laptop, so I do not have MATLAB license, but you can profit about MATLAB license uh, on um, on uh, MATLAB website. So the website is this is uh, this one. And uh, second thing we need to do is to open uh, the MATLAB script file that uh, I leave you in a specific folder. Um, this is the script. Uh, I don't know if there is a, a specific a specific way to properly optimize it. Hope I think there is, but uh, let's keep it as it is for now. So you can see here. Um, you have a first section uh, in which you need to insert your input requirements the real one the effective one and here in these two rows here you will find the, the you, you need to insert the system perturbation input uh, parameters such as how much how, how much step load you you in, do you intend to give and uh, what is your bus swing as well as if you would like to use the DAB routine as I set properly, uh, do not touch the code below uh, the line, uh, the line number 20. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm reporting one of the examples made in the uh, DAB webinar. It is the 200 uh, kilowatts DAB a converter as you can see here uh, my best entry angles are angle one and uh, angle two um, 180 26.5 let me check if all input parameters are okay okay here uh, you can insert the fat uh, drain source capacitance uh, okay it seems that is okay so basically you copy this it's something like less than 300 rows. Go on the MATLAB folder, uh, sorry, on the MATLAB uh, website, copy this, sorry, paste this, paste the code here, and push enter. So once you do this, uh, you can see that the that MATLAB answers with the DAB kernel input parameters that are mine one you can find another table with manic tala scaling loss in terms of uh, power boost due to the input variation respect my kernel uh, the power scaling factor the frequency scaling factor and oh he is charging the the picture okay in the mean in, in a while like i'll explain the picture let let me jump to the home once again is uh, is slow a bit online, but oh, I have here on the bottom. So um, let me adjust this one. Oh yeah. So MATLAB MATLAB uh, answers with uh, with the three tables basically. The first table is the one which reports my kernel parameter that is on top kernel parameters that is on top. It is basically, let me, it's pretty slow. Yeah, that is this one. So this is my uh, DAB kernel parameters. Uh, you can find here Manic Tala scaling loss. Without this, uh, this approach cannot be used. Uh, 
as well as you find on the bottom your um, electrical parameters um, adjusted with your effective requirements so you can see uh, here is the 200 kilowatts example and actually the outputs are the everything that is required to any spice derived simulator or even the one i use at the tsp sim uh, so you need to give to the simulator the input bus voltage the angle one the angle two the leakage inductance turn ratio blocking cap if you would like to place it and the output capacitor actually i can place you can call i mean to be properly pedant i should have added even, even here the load resistor but uh, i mean i hope that uh, you can do that by your own out square over the power basically and once you have this uh let me go on the picture because i would like to comment with you the picture so basically uh, matlab outputs three plots like the same the same stuff i used for the llc uh you can see the on the plot one you see the output power output dc power on the plot two you see the uh, rms current just for the master fed our q1 i mean there is no reason to plot all eight rms currents because actually if you are able to reduce the current for the master fed automatically you are reducing the, the current for all the others so this is just as design um, uh, design approach if you are interested in uh, in uh, catching out the rms currents for all the feds use the simulator otherwise i mean the, the plot number two here was really hard to understand um the se the third plot reports the zeta map in a much uh, and uh, simple intuitive way uh, so let me explain this so on each plot you see three bullets bullets uh, red color green color and magenta color so the green uh, so, so the, the the red and the green bullet are located uh okay the ren and the grid bullet are located on the solid line that is our full load line okay is full load line that is the one i get uh, by placing the gain so the bor ratio the bor ratio uh, v in that is equal to one okay the so the dotted line that is that is this one here is the one related to um, the bus step system perturbation because do you remember that when because you, you remember that when we apply a step load we are working always on the same curve while when we are applying a bus step we are intrinsically changing the gain okay so the solid line refers to the gain equal to one the dotted line actually does not refer to any gain in particular because it is strongly from your uh, bus step it means that uh, again if you are boost it, it, it this algorithm automatically catches out the specific gain according your bus step so the solid line is calculated automatically uh, sorry the dotted line is calculated automatically while the solid line is the one we get at gain equal to one uh, i repeat once again the bullet so full load for the red bullet step load for the green bullet bus bus step uh, bus step for the magenta bullet the same on the plot number two and the same for the plot uh, number three that is the hour zero voltage switching map so you have the list here oh let me put this window on the bottom because i don't know why okay uh, okay so basically what i did i took the parameters the electrical parameters which refers to our uh, our equivalent system and then i move it to to pcm right so if you open pcm oops oops now this is tina let's move to pcm okay so this is the basic skeleton of the dual active bridge okay so you can find despite the uh, let's say the eight fats the leakage inductance the dc blocking cap the magnetizing inductance here 
uh, you can find these blocks here. That is basically how I have realized at that time. This is the simplest way possible, but if you have an easier one, use your one. Anyway, these blocks here creates the dead time. And here there is a smart block from PSIM. Let me zoom in a bit here. That basically generate a square wave at a specific duty, a specific frequency with a specific delay. So I, I found it very, very smart to probably uh, simulate the DAB in a very fast way. Okay, so once... Ah, another thing before starting the simulation, another thing is, is, oops, is this one. If I go back to the code, uh, if I go back to the code, let's go here on the on the code here. You can find that on the on the routine, I appositely uh, created a little paragraph in which MATLAB is is creating a txt files uh, to pass all the extracted all the extract, all the calculated parameters to the txt file. So remember, MATLAB or MATCAD is the master. So MATCAD, uh, MATLAB performs the calculation. PCM, PCM or the simulator is a mere, a simple slave. So is an executor about what are you doing? Okay. So if you change this path here, uh, that actually is addressed to my hard disks hard disk so if you create a folder and you properly change your path actually you can profit about the fact that matlab can create the txt file for you but to properly get it working simply remember to change the path okay this path here is writing all the parameters in where is PCM, in this file here okay so it's creating this list here very simple there is nothing complicated and at the end at the end of this list you can see two added rows added rows in which you see angle 2 versus uh, p step so this is the step load and this is how you should change the angle 2 according your step load so you need to change the resistor first to mimic your step load change the angle to according to the one you are reading here that actually is extracted from the matlab routine if you gave correctly the input parameters and then you run play you run the the simulation uh, the simulation and everything should everything should work fine as well as you find another row in which uh, in which you see angle one versus bus, versus bus step. So basically, these quantify how the angle one. So this generator here, which uh, drive the, the the primary bridge, should be changed according to our requirements and according to our bus step to properly get the output voltage regulation. So it's pretty easy. Uh, once we have done that, so once you have run. The MATLAB code, uh, you automatically should have created a TXT file because MATLAB is writing all the electrical parameters to the file you need. To the file you need. Once you run the simulation, let's check what happens. Hope that everything is fine. In the meantime, careful to choose save and drive here. Do you see that there is a summation between the summation between angle one and angle two? So angle one plus angle two, as discussed even in the webinar, is the driving of the Q7 fit. Uh, so you can see that the simulation is uh, pretty good, 800 volts at 200 kilowatts. But let's discuss about the performance. Okay, so the simulation is good. I would discuss this one. Uh, let me check if I can do this. Okay. So bigger picture. Okay. So at full load, we are operating in this point here in which we have angle one equal to 180, angle two equal to um, uh, 26 degrees approximately. When you gave the step load, actually here I consider the case in the same case as the webinar. So I'm giving half power step load. Actually, you are moving on the same curve with gain equal to one. So you are moving from the red bullet. Let me remove this from the red bullet to the green 
palette. So angle 2, that is the x axis, is reducing from 26 to something like 12. When you are giving the bus step, you cannot think to use the solid curve because you are intrinsically changing the gain of the DAB, right? So MATLAB suggests that these um, this angle here is the one uh, is uh, the, the one you need in this case is 90 is 90 degrees so is is 90 degrees so we said during given the webinar that we need the, to, to get the best performance we need to lock the angle two versus the bus step and uh, move on the let me let me check if again leave this one okay Okay, so during the webinar, we said that uh, we need to uh, lock the angle 2 and move the angle 1. So it is possible to demonstrate how, uh, how this algorithm offers the better performance, while you can even think to move on angle 2 without getting lower performance, but assuring uh, probably an easy call. Okay, but the most interesting thing is the plot number three. So basically the plot number three is saying as even anticipated in the webinar that the green ballot, so the step load is able to guarantee full soft switching while the bus step is not able to guarantee full soft switching, but this doesn't mean that you cannot get some soft switching for some specific fets. This can be uh, uh, catched out by inspection looking at the leakage current Anyway, there is another point. I have tried to set an initial starting point for the angle 2 that was something around 80, <coughs> something around here, and it is possible to demonstrate, as we said even in the webinar, that you are able to get zero voltage switching versus bus step while the Remes current uh, increases, so is brought to this point here. So you need to perform the common trade-off between conduction losses and switching losses according to your application. Uh, there is nothing more to add because if you are coming from, from the webinar, don't ask me why these windows always appear. I know that could be annoying, but I don't know how to fix it. Uh, do not think there is, there are, there are <coughs> sorry, there are added points to, to discuss. So if you have uh, questions feel free to contact me but I'll, I cannot assure a quick answer okay so I'm ending the video and hope uh, that uh, this, this routine fits your expectations so uh, enjoy